I'm Louise Swick of the Houston Catholic Worker, Casa Juan Diego. Our new book, Mercy Without Borders, The Catholic Worker and Immigration, published by Paulus Press, presents stories from our time in El Salvador when death squads stalked the people to the streets of Houston, where refugees and immigrants have fled for the past 30 years, and the stories of the houses of hospitality my husband and I developed to receive them. These stories of the joys, encounters, mysterious adventures, and tragedies of immigrants and refugees, along with our reflections on them, relate very much to the social teaching of the Catholic Church and the Judeo-Christian tradition of hospitality and welcoming the stranger. My husband Mark and I went to live in El Salvador in 1977 with our two children, who were six and eight years old at the time. We didn't know that we would land in the middle of a civil war. Father Bernard Serville, the priest we went to work with, was deported three weeks after we arrived. But he had introduced us to the small community he worked with and to a group of religious sisters. We stayed on for many months until the violence got so bad that we thought, and others also advised us, that we really should leave with our children. Some of you may have seen the movie Romero, the story of the arch martyred Archbishop of San Salvador. We were in El Salvador during the first third of that movie. We had a number of hair-raising experiences during our time there, which are recounted in the book. It's out of that experience in Central America that the Center for Immigrants and Refugees, Casa Juan Diego, the Houston Catholic Worker, was born. Our new book, Mercy Without Borders, tells our story but also the stories of countless immigrants and refugees who have passed through our doors, people escaping violence or trying to provide enough so their children would not die from malnutrition, people who walked across several countries arriving with swollen, blistered feet, needing help for a while to get started again. <clears throat> My name is Mark Swick, and I'm from the Houston Catholic Worker, Casa Juan Diego. Some might have thought that we had it all. We had purchased a house for the family and over a period of several years uh, earned a year's salary or even two to put in the bank. We had what might be considered the usual middle class uh, life. A four bedroom, two and a half bathroom house, two babies, two cars, two bank accounts, and two salaries. People respected us at the city gate, as the Bible would say. What would be next? A cottage on the lake, a boat, a large home with six bedrooms, a Mercedes, an upper class middle parish. Uh, we knew, however, that there was more than this to life. We made a decision to try to both work half time and have time to work in the community, such as our work supporting Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers. Our income was cut by two-thirds by the more move to half-time work, even though two people were now working. We moved to a two-bedroom apartment, which is more than adequate since the children were still small. The people at the city gates were unimpressed. In fact, people felt sorry for us. This was unnecessary as we were surviving very well with our simple lifestyle and still saving money, quote-unquote, for the children. Living with less income did not destroy us, but in fact prepared us for future moves. We knew about and were inspired by Dorothy Day and Peter Marin and the Catholic Worker Movement. We related to a small community and talked about a Catholic Worker possibilities and starting a group. After many months of thinking about moving to Latin America, we were ready to learn Spanish, to live with the poor, and to participate in the life of the church in Latin America. We moved to El Salvador with our two children, Jennifer and Joachim, in January of 1977. Merino Associate, Father Bernie Serville, was happy to have us in his parish. 
we of course had to pay our own way. We had approached El Salvador unaware of impending violence. We had not counted on the elections which occur every six years and were due to take place not long after our arrival. Little did we know how explosive elections might be in Central America. If we know what was to follow, we would not have made our journey, but the deed was done. The people told us there was a movement to challenge the repressive government, to support social movements, to elect someone in this very election who would really represent the people. Most of El Salvador was owned and controlled by 14 wealthy families, while the masses of people were desperately poor and the United States government was supporting this government. We were first-hand witnesses of the exclusion of the poor from any chance for a better life and the violence and repression of the government of El Salvador at that time. As we walked through our neighborhood late one afternoon, people ran from their homes to tell us a stage of siege had been declared. Though our Spanish was very limited at that time, we did not know these words. We soon understood that everyone must be in their homes by 9 p.m. Otherwise, soldiers would shoot any group of more than five people gathered together. Thank God the neighbors helped us to understand. We left El Salvador before Archbishop Romero was gunned down at Mass. We left before the four American churchwomen were killed. We left long before the Jesuits and their housekeeper and her daughter were killed. But during our time in El Salvador, seeing the church standing with the poor was a great example for us. It confirmed us in the way we wanted to be Catholic. We wanted to be devout Catholics living with and loving the poor. By the time we were back in the United States working at St. Teresa's Parish in Houston, the onslaught of homeless and rather desperate refugees began to arrive. We knew we should do something to help. We had few funds, but we had experience and we had come to know the people in El Salvador and Guatemala. We could speak Spanish now, more or less. We knew it was possible to start a Catholic worker house. You don't need a franchise to do so, just a willingness to follow the gospel perform the works of mercy, and try to build a better, nonviolent world. We had fallen in love while working with the poor. Our love began and flourished in the midst of service to others, so there were no excuses for not responding, or so we thought, and so we began. We discovered an old building once used as a meat market. The building was large, but had no heat, no gas, no shower, and only one toilet and one sink. We rented that old ugly building. To us it represented a beginning, and a beautiful one at that. The building was immediately christened Casa Juan Diego. There was an ungrand opening. We began to give food to families who took immigrants and into their own homes, and soon began a regular distribution of food and clothing to the poor of the community. Anyone who was in need could come. People came to help, to organize donations and distribute food. Young men and a few women began to arrive from El Salvador and Guatemala having fled the conflict in their own countries and they asked to stay in the house. The first guests had been sleeping in used car lots on Washington Avenue in Houston and were grateful for a bed. They helped out in the house in any way they could. We began to give hospitality to as many as a dozen each night. The guests told stories of the dangerous, difficult journey crossing several countries on foot or by freight train. Many of our first guests were young people sent out of Central America by their parents to avoid recruitment by either side of the conflicts. If all we had had to do was pay our rent and refer people to agencies, our work would have been easier. There were, however, no agencies to which we could refer the undocumented, or even some citizens. We had to take responsibility ourselves to try to help refugees begin anew, with the help of the Good Lord and so many who have come to join us as full-time Catholic workers or part-time volunteers over the years. This approach is called communitarian personalism. 
Doctors came to volunteer in our medical clinic. Soon we started our bilingual newspaper, The Houston Catholic Worker, El Trabajador Católico de Houston. Economic refugees from Honduras and later Mexico began to come to ask for help as well. Pregnant immigrant women asked if we could take them in. Battered women asked for help. And Thirty years later, we're still here, serving Christ in the poorest of the poor. But recently, so many who come to ask for help are sick and injured. Daily, we're presented with people who are seriously ill, mentally or physically, or who have broken limbs, or no limbs, or even more, broken heads or broken backs, or they've been shot in the head or shot in the back by thieves, and there's no one to receive them. Daily, Houston hospitals call us to pay for the cost of housing the sick and injured so they can discharge them from the hospital. There is an epidemic of neglect. All of these people have been abandoned by society. Mercy Without Borders is our story and the stories of so many guests who have come to our doors. Each day at Casa Juan Diego brings more stories, more joy, more pain, more adventures. One never knows who will come to the door. One never knows how guests of our houses will be treated in the community. Our inspiration for Houses of Hospitality for the refugees and the immigrants has been from Dorothy Day and Peter Maurin, the founders of the Catholic Worker Movement. Our first book, first book, The Catholic Worker Movement, Intellectual and Spiritual Origins, also published by Paulus Press, was the fruit of our study of the deep roots of the movement that Dorothy and Peter founded. They gave us the vision and the courage to try to live the gospel in our time. Thank you.